Well, good Sunday morning to all of you. I want to welcome you to Wood Village Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Tom Miles. I'm the associate pastor here at at Wood Village Baptist Church. And I want to thank you um, this Sunday morning for joining us. And we're gathering together this Sunday morning to worship God and to sing and praise Him with song and with our voices. We also want to listen to a word from Him that He'll reveal to us. So we're glad you're here. I know that this week, um, many of you received a letter from Pastor Bill and Carol. And I know that um, this letter was very difficult for them to write. And if you haven't read the letter, it simply states that um, due to health reasons, uh, Pastor Bill and Carol have decided that he would step down from the senior pastor role here at our church. And I know that uh, words can't express this loss either to them or to many of us. Um, well, for over three decades, uh, 36 years, Pastor Bill and Carol have served our church. And there's not a person here whose life has not been enriched by their ministry. And and so we know that there's no way that anyone could step in and fill this void that they will leave. And it's a great loss for us, but in, in deference to uh, Pastor Bill and Carol, uh, we won't dwell on our grief here today. But as they would want, we'll look ahead. And in his own words, in a letter that he sent, and those of the Apostle Paul, he said, we will be steadfast, anchored in Christ, and always moving with God in his work, always looking forward, always with expectations and faith of how God will work. And that's them. That's Pastor Bill and Carol. And you can be assured that um, one of the Sundays in, in June that we will celebrate Pastor Bill and Carol's 36 years of service here to our church to the city of Wood Village and to the kingdom of God. We'll do that. And so it's um, with a very heavy heart that um, we pray today. So pray with me. Father, we pray for Pastor Bill and Carol and this season and journey that they're on, that your grace and mercy will cover them. And as I remember in almost every one of his prayers, that um, they would be thankful and we would be thankful for this day, this day alone that you have given us to serve you. And Father, I pray for their continuing ministry as they move forward together, that it would continue to bear fruit. And Lord, that their love for you and that the, their love for each other would continue to flourish. And that's what we pray. And Lord, I think it's appropriate to pray their, pray their marriage verse that they dedicated themselves to on their wedding day. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is a fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And that's Psalm 16, 11. Amen. Amen. So we would be grateful for that. And perhaps um, at this point, it's very fitting that as we consider um, seasons of life and that God is always faithful that when he closes the door on one season, that he opens the door on the next. And so today... With that opening door, we celebrate our 2020 graduates, and we'll send them off with a word of wisdom from Psalm 1, a psalm that depicts two types of people, two paths to choose, and two destinies. And what's most important in that journey is to whom are you listening to? But first, let's celebrate our graduates. Hi, I wish we could come together in celebration, 
but with social distancing, that's still not possible. So on behalf of Wood Village Baptist Church, I congratulate our high school graduating class of 2020 on all your accomplishments. None of us, least of all you, would have expected that this is how your senior year would have come to an end. But you have handled it with dignity and class, and I thank you for that. As you continue your life's journey, I hope you will look to scripture for wisdom and encouragement and support. And I think a passage that will help you with that is Proverbs 3, verses 4 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. It is the philosophy of Wood Village Baptist Church Youth Ministries to partner with parents to help grow kids into the people that God has created them to be. And your spiritual journey is not ending. So I encourage you to join a Bible study, a small group, a service team, and continue to grow. Allow the people in those groups to help you grow in your love and knowledge of the Lord. And maybe along the way, you'll help someone else grow in the knowledge and love of Christ. After all, iron sharpens iron. I know you have helped sharpen me. So as you continue on your journey, submit to the Lord. Follow the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of your life. And if you do that, you're sure to finish the work that the Lord Jesus has assigned to you. I'm excited for the next steps of your life's journey. Good morning. I'm Dr. Tim Collins. I've got to say it's not every day I have the opportunity to dress up in the fancy robes and put on the fancy hat. These things are reserved for special occasions, and today just happens to be one of those, where we as a church family, the Wood Village Baptist Church family, have the chance to celebrate with some of the, our members a major milestone that they've achieved in their lives. Whether it's graduating from a trade school, earning an associate's or a bachelor's, a master's, or even a doctoral degree, we want to say congratulations and job well done. We also want to honor the time and the investment that you have made to reach this milestone in your life and to let you know that we as a church family are tremendously proud of you. I've got two thoughts that I want to share and then I want to close with a blessing and I'll make them brief. First thought is this, that your time and presence in this place at this moment are not by chance. I'm reminded of the story back in Esther where Esther and Mordecai wonder about their circumstance and situation, and Mordecai wonders aloud if both he and Esther were called for such a time as this. And while they wondered out loud if coincidence had brought them to that place, the writer of Esther wants us to know quite clearly without any doubt 
that it was not by chance or coincidence that they were there in that moment, but by divine plan. As God had intended, they were working out his plan of salvation for the nation of Israel at that point in time. Not chance, not coincidence, divine plan. In the same way where you are in this place today is not an act of coincidence or chance, but God has led you to this place as a part of his divine work to spread the work of salvation to every corner. The second idea is this, is that the message that we carry as God moves us from place to place is one of divine power. Romans chapter one, Paul reminds us, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the very power of God for all who believe. As we look at the unprecedented times that we find ourselves in presently, it's clear that the message of the gospel is needed now more than ever. The message of grace and the message of God's hand of redemption is so needed. And as God moves you from where you are to where he intends you to be, take that message with you as you go. It's a message of divine power that God has, is, and will continue to use to draw all people to himself. With that, I wanna close with a blessing that's found in Numbers chapter six. And it says this, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hi everyone, my name is Jacob Crandall um, and I grew up at Wood Village for the first 19 years of my life. If you don't know me, you probably know my mom, Connie Crandall, or my dad, Craig Crandall. Um, I want to send a special congratulations to all of our graduates at Wood Village Baptist Church. You did it, you made it through. Just like many of you, I, I also graduated with my, my degree and, and for my program. And I'm sure like a lot of you, I was, I know I was really, really excited for all the things that would come along with it. I was excited to do silly photos around campus with my friends. I was excited to do a graduation party with my friends. I was excited to have my family come up and visit um, California where I was living. And all those things kind of got um, put on pause or, or perhaps canceled because of, well, because of the pandemic COVID-19. So for all of you, I know that you were probably excited for similar things and um, just know that we may not get to enjoy it as we thought we were going to, but there's still a lot to be proud of. I think of my time when I came into Biola and how different I was versus the man I am now and how much I grew over three years. And I'm sure for many of you, if you were to look back past your time in your programs, in your high school or in your college classes, look back at how much you've changed, how much God has done in your life. How much you've grown. That right there is worth celebrating. It's worth celebrating big and it's worth celebrating small. Celebrate with your family and friends who are closest to you. Congratulations, guys. Keep going. God bless. Thanks.
Well, congratulations to our graduates. I know that it takes a lot of discipline and effort and focus and grit to accomplish something like you've accomplished. So just want to tell you good work and we're proud of you. Congratulations. And my congratulations to the parents out there because I think, uh, and grandparents and families, because I think there's probably a bit of sweat equity on your part involved with that as well. So congratulations. Well, my uh, short message today is from Psalm 1. I think it's a perfect psalm for graduates. And it's a perfect psalm really for, for anyone, perfect message. Um, and I titled it, To Whom Are You Listening? And actually, um, in all honesty, I originally tied, entitled it, Who Are You Listening To? But somebody informed me that that's poor grammar. So I changed the title to, To Whom Are You Listening? Um, and I chose this title because of a quote that I heard uh, years ago that's really stuck with me. And it stuck with me 
because I believe it to be very true. And it's a quote that I heard from John Maxwell, and this is the way I remember it, and uh, where he said, if you want to see where you will be in the next five years, just look at the books you were reading and the people that you are hanging out with. And so what he's saying is, um, is that what you will become is what you focus your mind and your heart on. They will determine your success and the meaning of your life. And I think that's very true. So to whom are you listening? So let's listen to Psalm 1. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither. And everything he does, he prospers. But the wicked are not so. They're like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Now, I memorized this passage of scripture almost 20 years ago, and I memorized it and I meditated on it because I believe it to be true. And so far, I think that's turned out to be very true. And so I meditate on this and I still do as often as I can. And I believe that he blesses when you meditate on his words. Now, Psalm 1 is the, it's the prelude to all the books of Psalms. And it's interesting because it's a very simple psalm with a very simple contrast. It's a contrast between two types of people with two very different destinies. The righteous person who will experience joy and the wicked person who will experience, well... Um, who will perish. Very different. And see, so very simple. So we see after all these years of work um, that you've performed and this diligence, hard work, everything you've had to suffer through, we thought it might be um, good for you to make this lesson simple. But in all, all honesty, this lesson is, it's not simple at all. And what we see here is that in verse one, that the righteous person is happy. So this word blessed, a joyful, is this happiness. And why? It's because he or she avoids the advice and the lifestyle and the friendship of wicked persons. Now, at first glance, this might seem to be very obvious to you, but try it. It's not simple. How difficult is it to avoid family and friends that are bad influence? On you, And it's, it's not that simple. It's hard. And, and I admit it even in my own life. Nevertheless, the results of that is, is true. If I want an enriched life, if I, uh, if I want a full life, a blessed life, I shouldn't hang out with people that are going to tear me or bring me down. Seems obvious. But is it easy? Well, no, because here's where, where the real work comes in. It's in the second part of the beginning of this psalm. And it says that the ha this happy person delights and meditates on the word of God. And the point is, is that this happy person will receive as a benefit uh, uh, blessedness and happiness by reading scripture. And so the focus here is on God, God not the person, that the word of God is the source of righteousness and the source of happiness. Now, this is not painting a picture of that person who begrudgingly gets up in the morning and, and, and reads through the Bible with um, a grudging attitude. No, no, this, this person is a person that delights in God's word, that can't wait to read it, that it's their very food and it's the very blood that courses through their veins. That's the picture here. And, uh, and that's not so easy to do, is it? 
We all kind of know that. But, but personally, I know this to be true because it's been true in my life because it has been a gift from God that he's given me because I asked him for it. I asked him for a delight in his word and he granted it. And you can ask him too. And he can give that to you. I believe it. You need to believe that. So Psalm 1, it pictures this happy person as the one who separates himself from from things that are evil and from people that are evil. And he gives, he or she gives tremendous energy towards knowing God's word and searching it and meditating on it. Now I know that you know that nothing of any significance in life comes without focus and effort. And we know that. It takes commitment. And so what the psalmist does, he goes on next, and and he gives us this picture of a righteous man, a visual. He says this righteous man will be like a tree. Picture a tree in the midst of the wadis of Judah and um, near a stream, but Everything around it is desolate and dry and windblown. But this tree, it's planted by this stream. Um, It sinks its roots deep into this stream, this water of life. And so its leaf, it never withers. And it always bears fruit in its season, even though everything else around it is barren. And so the same way it is with the righteous man, that he will always bear fruit if he sinks his roots deep into the root, into the word of God, and he will prosper. And then in contrast, we have the wicked. The wicked, they will not stand in the judgment. In other words, they will stand and be judged, but they will have no defense. They will have no purpose and no influence over the righteous. And ultimately, they will fall. The wicked man, he's pictured as chaff, that it's useless. It's this discard of the harvest. It's too insubstantial even to reach the ground when it falls. Instead, the wind, it blows it away, never to be seen again. Quite a picture. But Ultimately, God will be with the righteous and that they will be known by him and they will be guided by his ways. And so I leave you with this. It has been my experience in life to be challenged by many ideas, many people, and many different ways of living. But I still remain skeptical over anybody who tells me something that they say is absolute truth. But I tell you, I have never, ever been disappointed by God's words. They have been my guidepost and my foundation for the last 20 years. And I've fallen more in love with Jesus because of my love for his word. And so I pray for you. I pray that it will be your joy. God will be your joy and his words will be your delight. And you will spend time meditating on his words and that his word will be your guide and your companion in whatever adventure you are on. So that's what I pray for you. Thank you for listening to me. Now, it's the first Sunday of the month, and traditionally as a church family, we celebrate the Lord's Supper of Communion together. So I'll take a moment if you want to um, press pause and go get a, a piece of bread and maybe a glass of juice and celebrate it together with us. I'll be reading from Matthew's Gospel. And this is Matthew 26. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread And after blessing it, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. We do this um, to remember Jesus' sacrifice that he took our sins, my sin, upon his body to pay the price so that I wouldn't have to pay it. And so we eat this bread to remember his suffering and his sacrifice.
And then it goes on to say, he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And so we drink this cup of juice, um, wine to them to remember the blood that Jesus spilt, that he died. Not only did he take our sins upon himself, but he died on the cross for me. Um, But we also remember that he was resurrected so that we can know that that gift of his life on the cross was sufficient for me. That all I need to do is to believe in his work and what he did and to trust in that and I can have eternal life. And if you believe that, you can celebrate this with us. So drink with me. So thank you, Jesus, for everything that you did for me and for us and for your church. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for this Sunday. I thank you for the sacrifice and the gift of your son, that you planned that before the foundation of the world, that we would receive the benefit of his sinless life, his sacrifice, and the rewards of his resurrection, Lord, as we will be resurrected with him again. And so we thank you for that. Thank you for our graduates. Thank you for our church. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for our dear Pastor Bill and Carol. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, next week, if you join us, you'll get to hear from Pastor Raymond as he brings us a a message from Psalm 23. And I'm looking forward to that. It's one of my favorite psalms. But I think we might have a few more graduation videos before we go. So I hope you'll stick with us. Asher, now that you've graduated kindergarten, what are you excited about doing in first grade? Having a new teacher and playing. Is playing? Like with who? Like with other kids now. Are you excited about learning new things? Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. For the kids graduating high school this year, Is there anything you want to say that would be helpful for them? I don't know. You don't know? That's okay. That's fine. It's hard to give advice like that. Mm -hmm. All right, last question. What do you want to be when you grow up? A cop. A what? A cop. A cop? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. What is your name? Glenn Goodrick. And how old are you? Six. And now that you've officially graduated kindergarten, what are you most excited to do in first grade? Um, Do homework and have a new teacher. Yeah. And most, and most math and learning more stuff. Fun. Do you have any advice for the class of 2020 graduates? Yes. What's your advice? Helping kids clean up their toys and helping more teachers. Oh, that's good advice. And what do you want to be when you grow up? A famous baseball player. Wow. Bye.